you, your version will be better than mine for sure. No, it's going to be short. Um, so I'll start. Uh, hello, everyone, uh, and welcome to our session. Today, we're going to be talking about AI Builder and its integration with Excel. Uh, AI Builder is a large topic, so we're going to narrow it down and focus just on the form processing capabilities. Artificial intelligence and machine learning nowadays is an extremely important topic. So I'll provide you today with some practical examples as to how you can use it with Excel. Um, my name is Dennis Malatsev. I've um, designed, uh, developed, and delivered over 100 highly customized SharePoint projects <laughs> and Office 365 projects. And uh, in the last two years or so, I have also been leveraging the Power Platform uh, to uh, meet the evolving needs of my clients. I live right here in Toronto, although I understand the rest of you might be in different countries. Um, currently, I work in TD, but I also work with many other clients. Um, in the past, let's say maybe five, ten years ago, uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning um, used to be associated with something difficult to learn, hard to understand, but things have changed. Today, artificial intelligence is no longer an exclusive domain of data scientists. For example, um, with AI Builder, anyone can leverage the power of artificial intelligence to process images and surface the results in some pure data format, even if you have no prior coding experience. Uh, on the current slide, you can see a typical sample of an invoice with various data points, such as invoice number, uh, you have a date, due date, you have an entire table here, and uh, invoice total. And typically, when processing an invoice, you might be required to copy all of these to some some Excel table. And some people who work in accounting and other professions might be doing uh, this hundreds of times per month, if not more. So wouldn't it be nice if you could avoid manual copy pasting of uh, this data to an Excel table? Would you rather have these email attachments with invoices automatically saved to Excel like this. So today, uh, we'll build a power platform flow together that will do just that. And this is another practical example. This is a Power App app that allows us to upload a picture or a PDF file of a, an invoice. In this case, it's a Rogers uh, invoice, internet bill. Uh, it recognizes this, outputs all of this data to, to a form. In this case, it's just three data points. You have a chance to modify it, and if you are so satisfied with what you can see, you save it to Excel. We'll build this app together as well. So where where is the eye here? Um, um, Artificial intelligence here is actually all packed very nicely in so-called AI models. Before you can process an image of an invoice and put it as some text data with numbers to Excel, you first need to train AI model by providing it with a bunch of existing invoices. Once it's trained, this AI model can recognize new invoices that it has never seen before and use the same principle and learning that it has done to save everything to your Excel table. So I, <clears throat> I want to move to the uh, demo. Let's see. So these are real invoices that Rogers, the Canadian telecom company, sends me each month. Um, as you can see 
it has the same data points I mentioned before, bill number, bill date, um, total pay, which actually is mentioned, I think like four or five times here, but that's not important. I also have HST here. Um, that's about it. I, I kind of want to every month um, record all of this data. And I want to I want it to be saved here in an Excel table. Um, so this Excel table, uh, for the sake of a demo, I put here in Office 365 inside OneDrive. Um, if you have no subscription, you can get a an Office 365 uh, development subscription that will la last it for at least three months, or if you keep using it, it'll probably be lasting for at least a year or more. So I already have my subscription, and I already uploaded a, an Excel file to OneDrive for Business, although you can also put it into SharePoint if you prefer. But let's keep it simple. So this is my Excel file, and um, these are my invoices. So my goal is to somehow uh, create some kind of automation to help with a routine that is like error prone. I have to do it every month, not to forget this, or maybe I'm rushing to do it last uh, day of the year. So is there anything I can do to, to automate this? So yes, we, we can do something. So the first thing we'll build is going to be a form like this. So this form is hosted inside Office 365, inside Power Platform. So for those who are not familiar with the Power Platform, it's a Microsoft uh, set of products, uh, let's say, that is um, created to promote citizen developers, meaning um, experts, who are not really developers, who just need to do their job, automate something, improve something, and uh, do it quickly with as little code or no code at all. So in this case, uh, my goal is to create an app using this platform that has Excel file as a data source. So I have two ways to do that. I can choose a difficult way to do that or a simple one. Simple one here in this case is to generate an app based on a data source automatically. So which I'm going to do. So I have navigated to a Power Apps um, portal. Let me show you how you get there. If you have Office 365, you should be able to find it here, Power Apps. If you have a license, you'll see that. So once you're here, you should see that Excel icon in a second. I'm going to click on it. And this is the way to um, this is the way to generate an entire app from scratch. So all it asks me really is to select an Excel file. I store it inside uh, OneDrive. Let me show you. This is my OneDrive. It, um, I have an invoices folder. And inside this folder, I put um, this Excel file, although you can put it anywhere. It's not important. But what's important here is just to select this file. So, um, so there, that's the file. And some or many um, Excel files might have more than one table. I only have one. <laughs> And I already gave it a nice name before uh, we started. By default, you might have no table at all. In this case, you need to create it. Or it will just be called table one by default. So I have a nice name. Going to connect the data source. And that's pretty much it. The entire app will be generated on the fly within a few seconds. In order to do this, uh, you do not need any extra licenses on top of the ones that are included in Office 365. So up to this moment, there is nothing extra you have to pay. Um, I'm going to just double check if there are any questions.
Uh, so Christian hmm. is asking, where is the AI builder integrated and in which part of the Power Platform is it included? Let's, is it inside Power Apps? Um, it is side by side with Power Apps. So if you nav navigate to the Power Apps portal or to the Power Automate portal, you should see this app uh, AI builder um, section. If it's not visible, uh, I think it should be visible. You can click on it and it should ask you to start a trial. So AI Builder acts as an add-on. It does not leave inside uh, Power Apps or, or Power Automate. It leaves an entire Power Platform altogether. So once you have your AI model here, it's, it's accessed from either of these two. And uh, I'll show you how to get there. In, in a couple of minutes. So is it inside Power Apps? So you create a, a, an AI model outside Power Apps, but you use it inside Power Apps. So if it makes sense. So, so this is the, right, yes. So uh, the flow, the Power Automate um, platform and Power Apps platform, they both can access this AI model we are going to build. So if you saw it in the flow, that's that's normal place as well. So I want to demo this app. So we've generated this uh, based on this Excel file. So my um, kind of preliminary step is to start adding uh, roles here based on my uh, Rogers invoices. I'm going to do that here. I can create a new row here. It looks nicely. And if you are working with Excel and you are struggling to automate UI, hide um, parts of the screen in Excel, show it based on condition. For example, maybe you are part of a certain AD group that is not supposed to see certain uh, rows or columns. That's maybe a good option for you. Mm -hmm. If uh, VB script it does not do the job, although I, I'm sure you can do it there as well. So just as an example to see if it works, I'm going to create um, dummy rows, then open it here to verify that, yes, indeed, Excel acts as a database in our case. It's interesting because Power Apps inserts without asking you a new column. This column serves the purposes of a unique ID so that it, if you have two uh, rows with identical data, it's not confused as to which one you're working with. I wouldn't delete it, but at the same time, if you do delete it, you'll notice that Power App will add it back. <laughs> so no need to fight this. So this is the first iteration of the app. Honestly, it's already serving the purpose. You can uh, view your rows, search them, uh, delete them, edit them, but there is no AI yet at all. Remember, our goal here is to do something like this. Upload an invoice to the app and get some data automatically from it. Uh, we'll do that in a second. First, and I'm sorry, it's not an introduction to the uh, Power Apps. I hope you're not going to be overwhelmed, but all I'm doing here is I'm working with screens for now. These three screens were automatically generated for me. I didn't do any development whatsoever. You, I hope you noticed that I haven't written a single line of code yet. Uh, my goal to ex extend this app, even though it's generated by default, it doesn't mean I cannot add any more screens. So I'm going to do that. So this new screen will be this one. So it doesn't exist yet. So I'm going to insert it new screen. Uh, there are many uh, options here. These are, temp these are templates. Um, Dennis, sorry <laughs> to interrupt you. Uh, is there any way you can do a little bit of zoom in the Power Apps uh, screen? Sure. In case yeah. some, some of the attendees have are watching from mobile devices or small devices, yeah. small screens. Yeah, that's yeah, great. Thank, that's much better. Yeah, thank thank you. you. I was about to do that. I thank forgot. you. I have a massive screen, so for me, it's not a problem. So uh, we were about to add a new screen. Uh, 
it's right here, new screen. You can add a blank one, or if you want, you can see some templates here. I don't need any of them uh, except for maybe this one. The reason I selected this one because it has a nice um, header already created. So the title was here, Process Invoice. I'm going to do that. Just typing Process Invoice. And the blank area will be used by the AI Builder here. So if you go to Insert and then to AI Builder, um, you'll see that there are several options. And by the way, if you're trying to replicate it right now and you don't see AI Builder, it's because you haven't started AI build Builder trial. So I have already done that before. So I see these three options. So a business card reader is something that we're not going to do today. Text recognition, something that we're not doing today, but form processor is what we use to uh, recognize forms such as um, invoices. So I'm going to click on this one. And uh, you'll see how easy it is. It has literally no settings. I've already added it to the screen. I'll try to make it a little bit bigger. So when you add this control, AI Builder control, it gives you a list of all AI models that you already have. I already have one that's called Process Invoices, but I want to show you the entire process from scratch. Um, we, in this case, I'm just going to click New Model. And in here, it'll show me all models, model types I, I can select. If you remember, we're still only doing today form processing. So I'm going to do that. It says read and save information from standard documents. So our Rogers uh, Bells is a standard document. So perfect choice. I can give it an, a name, uh, Rogers Invoices. It says actually prepare to have five documents or more with the same layout. Let's see, I, I have prepared, <laughs> I have them. And please have a look at how it's happening. You'll notice that I'm literally not using my brain here. Uh, all this time, I'm just, all this time, I'm just clicking next, next, next. There is only one button available almost at any point. So notice nothing else to click. I just uh, follow instructions, uh, click add documents. Then it asks me, where do you store your documents? I say, on my local disks for now. Clicking here, and it says, select your forms. So I have these five forms. I'm going to select them. Then notice no options here. Um, I'm just clicking next, 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 really here. Close. And then if I click Analyze, um, artificial intelligence without my help will spend some time to find all possible data points on the form. So this is where it might take several seconds to several minutes. So it might be perfect to go over some questions. There aren't any new questions. Any questions, guys? Please type it in the comments section or in the chat section. Um, so Christian is asking if we don't have access to AI Builder, for, uh, we could try to get the data from the invoices using Power Query in Power BI. Depending on the PDF, it can be easy or not, but it's doable. Do you know whether PDF Connector is planned to be added to Power Query in Excel? Uh, that I don't know. I d I'll defer to uh, experts in Power BI. I um... Yeah, text recognition, I can talk a little bit about that. So there is a question, text, text recognition yeah. work the same way. Um, they're very similar. But I want to, to make one point across very clearly here. Uh, you, are, um, you might be tempted to say my PDF has text fields and maybe I can write code or extract it. Uh, what we're trying to demo here is images of uh, invoices. Um, 
they might be just photographs. You can take a photo of an invoice and you'll still be able to, to extract data from it. So if you have PDF with text data, you can uh, copy paste from that. I consider it as already cheating for our purposes, because in this case, you might not really need any AI at all. So do we need to subscribe Power App in order to build? Do we need to subscribe to uh, to Power Apps in order to build something like this? How much is a subscri subscription? Vince is asking. Um, so we, we can talk about uh, licensing at the end. I hope we have time for that. But up to this moment, uh, without AI Builder, it was free, uh, free in a way that it's included in your Office 365 overall license, E3 or E5 license, or business okay. essentials. Okay, and Prab is asking, are there only three default AI models provided by Microsoft? For other cases, would we need to create our own models? Is there a marketplace where we might have access to more models? So in Power Apps, there are three models available here. There used to be four. They removed uh, one. I think the one was called object Rec detection model. I think it didn't work really well. That's what, but I expect it to be back may, uh, hopefully soon. Um, there are more models. Uh, however, so these are visual models, and there is a bunch of uh, database models where there is no picture at all. We're not covering them today, but uh, there, there is a whole different topic about them. Okay, and Shafiq is asking, can we do the same for different PDF invoices from different vendors, but with the same data sets? Y yes and no. So for every invoice type and layout, you need to train it separately. So if you have 10 vendors and every vendor has its own template, even though they look very similar, you need to create 10 models. It's not that big of a deal, uh, trust me, <laughs> but you'll have to have one model per vendor per type of a, of a of a document. Okay, and Anthony is asking what Power Platform license one needs to have access to AI Builder. I believe you speak about that at the end of the session. Yeah, yes, I would prefer to keep it at the end. Uh, okay, Anthony, so we will defer your question till the end of the session. And we've got Faraz asking, uh, no, this is, is, is a reply, good news. Um, for us, is saying in future updates, we can see PDF connector Power Query for Excel. It may be a wish list feature. So maybe we can uh, vote for that so that we can have a PDF connector uh, as part of the options for accessing data or for grabbing data in Power Query, mm -hmm. importing data. And that's it for questions. Any, any other questions, guys? If you have a question, mm -hmm. please type it in the chat box. And let's yeah. continue with Dennis. Yeah, um, if we have a um, kind of pause for a couple of minutes because AI Builder needs to think, we'll uh, ask questions, but that was a, <laughs> was a big list. I hope you remember still what we were doing. So we uh, were at the moment where we dragged and dropped the control here on the form, and then there was no model we wanted to use, so we clicked new. Then we uploaded, so at this point we train our model. So training means we need to provide some uh, material, training material, which we did, but we're still in the middle of doing this. So um, we uploaded five, five documents, then AI Builder was thinking for a couple of minutes. Now it says, hey, I found a ton of data points, but you probably don't want all of them. Can you, Dennis, can you please select, pick ones you want to, to care for? So this is what I'm gonna do. So this is the first PDF document, uh, or it could be an image. Please don't think that it's important that it's PDF format. Uh, and it says, select fields you care about. I'm going to select, um, and by the way, let me zoom in. I know you can barely see anything. So I only want four. So this is going to be bill number. And you can select it. Uh, and also you can rename it, give it a nice name of your kind of variable. It says it already exists, that's strange. Okay, so 
this is the first uh, data point I care about. Next one is build date. Just click on it. And I don't like spaces. As you notice, I just uh, replace space with something. I can do it like this. Or in this case, I just add underscore. It's a matter of preference. You'll see why it matters later. Then I'll, I want to see a total pay. I'll take it maybe from here. Uh, and I'll call it total due. And I want to show you something tricky here because everything I did here was simple, but have a look here. You see HST here. So th these are taxes. What if I want just this data and I don't want this? So I don't want this tax. I know it's HST, I just need a number. So very recently there is a preview feature appeared literally a week ago or maybe a week and a half. Now you can uh, help the AI builder to select what you want. So in this case, I can do this, resizing, which is really cool. We didn't have that option recently. Total, same thing, giving it a name. So now okay. I'm... Dennis, sorry, I have a quick question about this part. What if uh, you have like a bigger number? Because you selected a certain area. So here, the HST is only $11.7. So what if it's $1,000? You have a $10,000 bill and it's $1,000 or something? It will recognize it. It's, uh, it is smart. So what I did here, I helped AI to look at something, but uh, in some cases, you might have things jumping around on the screen. A little bit to the right, to the left, bigger, wider. As long as it's approximately the same, it'll get it. Okay. So this is this is the reason we're using AI and not just uh, hard coding coordinates. So it would still recognize extra digits, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. If you if you have if you owe ten thousand bucks, it will show ten thousand bucks. Okay, great. Thank you. So I'm done with the first form, but I need to do this process for the rest of them. I'll just speed up and do it quicker. Um, I'll do this um, kind of pinpointing for HST. I need to do it for all four uh, forms that are left. And one more. And uh, after I'm done with this, it'll probably think for another two minutes. So this is a good chance to ask questions. Okay, so we have a question here from Christian. If I understood correctly, we would need a different Power App for each type of invoice. Can they write in the same Excel file? Uh, no and yes. <laughs> you, mm, you, so if you have 10 different invoice types, create, train 10 models and create one Power App. So you can um, you can have one AI builder control, and if you want, you can have uh, multiple buttons. And one will say one vendor, let's Rogers, um, another one, tell us whatever. And based on where you click, you can your control can use different AI model because AI model is just a variable here. Mm -hmm. So trust me, it's easy to do if you if you really need to. But in this case, we're trying to go very simple and just use one model for now. Okay, and Sayed is asking, can I extract the line items? The uh, line items, um, let's see. Yeah. You're talking uh, about these guys, right? Yeah, I think this is what he's talking about. You can. And um, you can. So this is a table object. I'll show you in a couple of minutes, but yes, you can. In my Rogers invoice, I have no tables. 
so uh, it's going to be harder to show, but I will use um, some examples. So let's see where our training pro process is. So it's, it says trained. I'll probably need to zoom more. So it's trained. Now remember, all we we had. Oh, I need to stop doing this. Hmm. Apologies. Okay, good. <laughs> this Zoomit app didn't let me go. So we left off here, where we tried to select a model for our uh, form processes con processor control. Select model. So now if I refresh, I do hope I can see it. And I don't see it here because it's not published. So it's one more step. Need to click on it and click publish. Then if I go back and refresh it, it should show up any second. There you go. There. Um, it's not useful yet. Maybe uh, I'll start playing with this and upload one sample um, invoice. And by the way, I, I want to point out that so these invoices are different and these are used for a trading. But I don't want to use them anymore because it's it's considered cheating. So I need new ones that my AI model did not see before. So I have prepared totally different five ones that AI Builder has no idea about. So I'm going to select one of them, and um, it will recognize something. It's going to be very hard for you to see, <laughs> but bear with me. You'll see how it's going to be useful useful in a sec. While it's recognizing, might take a while, I will add a few labels. Remember, we're building our um, probably move it a little bit here. I'm going gonna to make it very ugly because that's not the point of the presentation. Um, so the first one will be uh, invoice. Invoice number, another one due date. Very ugly, that's normal and total amount. Then I'll add uh, three text boxes that colorate, uh, correlate to every in, uh, label. And I'll give it everyone a good name here. DB invoice number. TB, TB stands for tax box. TB due date. Um, TB total amount. Okay. So this is where something finally interesting is going to happen. So we already recognize the invoice, I hope. Although, let me try again. I don't think it worked because I copy-pasted the control. It destroyed the data. So after this is done, I should be able to expose data from my invoice in these inboxes, input boxes. And when I finally like I'm happy with what I recognize. I can also save it to Excel. We'll do it in a second. But first, let's try to display data here. So um, if I click on the input box, I can call. I can get to data by calling form processor object here. Uh, I'm going to do that. Form processor one. 
then fields, and then um, invoice number or bill number in this case, doesn't matter. So that worked. You see this number comes from the invoice. And by the way, um, somebody asked about the tables, like a table you saw here. So if I had a table and if I chose to recognize this, tables uh, would reside in here. Instead of fields, you'll, you would see tables, tables, and then you'll see table name. It would be table one probably because you cannot choose names for them. And uh, yes, of course, it wouldn't show in, a, in an input box, but you could uh, edit data table like um, this one. Doesn't look like a table yet, but you can bi bind it to uh, tables like table one, and it'll render your table from your image, which is I, I say I say it's pretty cool. You can also hide and show some columns, rearrange them. Um, but we're not doing tables yet, but it's possible. I'm just going to finish with um, fields. So second one is due date. And total amount, the last one. And notice it has autocomplete here. I don't need to guess the names. So now um, let, let's see if it even works because yes, it got this one. Let's choose another one. So here it's December. I'm going to select a different months. This is, I think, October. So let's see if it shows something different. I'm pretty sure it'll work, but let's see. <laughs> Uh, and by the way, this uh, control shows only the first page, but I do have four pages in each invoice. So if you're wondering if you have multi-page document, will it work? Yes, it, it will. Uh, you might be wondering, oh, like why is it zero dollars? Might be a mistake. Yes, maybe. Let's confirm that. So I think I selected this one. And it's zero dollars, it's not a mistake. So it's pretty cool because you can catch mistakes um, that are not part of your AI, but a mistake made by like the uh, the client you work with. Mm -hmm. So in this case, it's working. But if I try saving it to Excel, it doesn't do anything because there is no code written. And by the way, uh, you probably noticed up to this moment, I have not written a single line of code. I hope you don't consider uh, this code, because really it's not code. It's um, like an, a simple Excel formula. But now there'll be one line of code I'll have to write. <laughs> so in order to save to Excel, it's going to be very easy. So there is a patch function, and then it, say, it helps me. I, I patch fun function updates or creates a new row in a da data source. It doesn't matter which. It could be Excel, could be SharePoint, could be SQL database. It's abstracted away from us. I'm going to type patch, and uh, a uh, Power Apps helps me with the data source. It says you only have one data source. I say yes, that's correct. And then there'll be a little bit of um, special syntax. It's called JSON, um, but that's how Power Apps exchanges data. So here. I need to save uh, three or four columns. I need to go back here to my Excel file, and I'm going to steal these columns and place them here like that. This is something we just need to remember um, to do. So I'm done here. So build number has data here in TV invoice number text and I need to repeat the same thing for four fields. So I have bill number, then I have bill date. I'm going to do the same here. And TB bill TB. 
the due date text and total due uh, the total amount. I was a little bit inconsistent in naming, but that's my fault. When you do it, <laughs> choose uh, consistent names. That helps a lot. A bill number. So HST total, I didn't show up here. I can just directly grab it from uh, the uh, form processor object. So I need uh, HST, there you go. So if I run it, click save, hopefully it works and it should show my new row here. So there you go. It works. It's pretty cool. Um, I can also upgrade this app and maybe add a button to navigate back. And maybe I'll show you just for fun because it's so quick. Uh, add button should look something like this. And I'll give it a white color. And I want to navigate. So I type navigate and the name of the first screen. First screen is called Browse Screen here. So if I test it, you'll see how easy it's to develop apps using Power, uh, Power Platform. So, so at this point, I say it's done. <laughs> it does not look as pretty as this, but this screenshot is the one I took a, a few days ago, so it's a real one. Just spend five more minutes to align it. So any questions? Yeah, OK, so will this work if I have a form that is filled out manually and scanned into a PDF file? Uh, Paco is asking this question. Good question. Um, I know it recognizes handwriting if it's um, well written, like in capital letters, but I only practice with my uh, Rogers invoices and uh, invoices that are typed with like digital letters. Um, so in order to try um, handwriting, I, I'm afraid I would need to prepare many forms, do many writing writings myself. I was just very lazy and I would need at least maybe five, six, ten of them. So I, it just I didn't bother because it, it was time consuming for me to try. If you really need to, and there is it's for free to try. You have a trial for a month, see if it works or not. I say it, um, it's a bit risky if you have to deal with many different people with different, uh, you know, hands. If it's That's the same the person, things. yeah, if it's the same person or two, two people, then I say, yeah, it's safe to try. If it's um, any number of people, then I would say it probably won't work, uh, won't work very reliably. Yeah, Paco is saying the form is constant or consistent, but the users vary. So yeah. probably he he, said, he means that the hand handwritings would vary. So. Yeah. Uh, at the same time, mm, the, there when it's really hard to see, but let's see if I can make it a little bit bigger. Yeah, it's hard. So you see, mm, there's 81 percent, 78 percent, 86 percent. So these are confidence numbers. So the higher it is, the more AI builder is confident about what it recognized. So what you can do, if you have a case like that with handwriting, perhaps you can still show it like this. And while you have picture on the screen, you can see, nah, that doesn't look like num like letter A, it looks like L. And you'll manually, you'll still get this recognized, but you'll have to manually retype it to make sure it's correct. And if you don't want to do it for every single form, you can only do it for, let's say, confidence levels below 60%. There, maybe uh, if it's below 60%, you can show it in red with alerts and say, hey, this needs attention, that something is wrong here. Can you verify? So you can still automate something here. Okay, great. And uh, Prab is asking, where is this app deployed in case it's user facing? So this, um, so in terms of user facing, you can do it, although it's a bit tricky. Um, 
overall it's deployed in your Office 365. It's deployed in your app, uh, app platform. Uh, in this case, if you navigate to Power Apps within your uh, tenant, you'll see it here. It will be listed here. And no one from the internet will be able to see it unless you really want to. If you want to, you need to invite them as a guest to your tenant and assign a license to them. Only then they'll be able to work with it. You cannot send it to, let's say, your uh, like mother-in-law <laughs> and ask her to open. It won't work straight away. Or you cannot send it to your clients uh, right away. You can invite them first to your tenant. Then if they don't have a license, you assign a Power Apps license. Or if they have a license in their tenant, which might be already the case, then it should work without adding an extra license. Although I haven't tried this bit, we could, it would be a nice experiment. But that's what I, I read. Okay, and uh, Vijay is asking, can you optimize the trained model? After it's already trained, you cannot improve it anymore. It does not it stop learning. The moment it's published, it's done. If you are not satisfied with the way it works, you delete it and create a new one. And the reason you, well, it's a limitation, but do you want to do that? Yes. For example, if you first trained with five documents, it's not not going to be as good as you if you have 500 documents. The more documents you upload, the better the prediction uh, results will be. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. And um, okay, so uh, you're you're done with your presentation, Dennis? I'm um, I I don't know. I, I I think I went over, but if you give me another five minutes, I can show you how to automate incoming emails so that they're recognized. Do we, Celia, do we have time? For yeah, that? sure. Yeah, okay. I think so. Uh, yeah. So we are about to hit. Uh, we we haven't reached one hour yet. Okay. And uh, and it's fine to stay a little bit longer for me if the uh -huh. participants are still uh, able to stay a little bit longer. I think it will be a good. Uh, it will be nice to see your demo. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Honestly, I think this demo is more exciting than apps demo because an apps uh, demo you need to do something. And in here, once it's set up, y you can just uh, leave your work and pretend that you're uh, doing this recognition work, even though. Emails are recognized by uh, artificial intelligence here. So this slide pretty much sums it up. You get in, uh, an invoice or even five invoices as attachments, and you they end up like this. Let's do this. Um, That's awesome. So I am inside Power Apps uh, Power Automate platform. I go to uh, Create. Then I, here I will select a template. I'm going to type uh, email and then AI builder. And notice I'm tr I'm trying to I'm lazy. I'm trying to save time, so I'm selecting a template. So AI build uh, email and AI builder. It shows me to so select the one that the second one. I I know that because I use it before. It's the closest to what I want. Um, I can explain later why you need a template, um, but here I'm just going to delete everything except for the first trigger. Um, so, so first the, the trigger says which folder do you want to monitor? I'm going to say inbox. Inbox, good. And then I can also say it should include attachments. That's already happening. Then this entire flow will only have three steps. Very simple. Second step, I will use my model. Uh, it's uh, The step is called predict. Predict here. Then I select my model. I think it was called something like uh, Rogers invoices. There you go. Now it will think for a little bit. It says provide a, uh, a document type. So it has an example, so I need PDF for now, but you can um, list them with comma separated like this, but I know I just need PDF. And then document um, 
which document do you want to feed to this AI model? In this case, I just select attachment here. And notice it was very straightforward. I click at a field, I add, um, Power Platform just suggests what to click. I don't really think here. So at this point, uh, the entire flow is two thirds done. I just need one more step, which remember, I still want to save it to Excel, right? So I've done the first step, two steps. Now we need to save it to Excel. Let's do that. I type uh, add a row. Mm, delete row, add a row into a table. That's what I want. It says, hey, where is your document? OK, let's say it's OneDrive for business. And it's inside OneDrive, of course. OneDrive, OneDrive. And where is the file? The file is inside invoices folder. And that's my document. And the table name, it suggests right here. So I'm almost done, but I just need to select uh, fields I want to save. So bill number value. And you notice you have lots of options like where physically the uh, data is located on coordinates, what's the confidence level and so on. I don't care about that yet, but you, you if you want, you can capture that as well. Um, I can also do total due and HST total, but I'm, I'm just for the sake of time, I'll save it. And I will send myself a, an email. I will test it right here. Say I'll prefer a trigger, uh, perform a trigger action. Then I will send myself, um, let's say five attachments from run, send, and let's see what happens. I can, uh, please wait to send. Okay, let's try again, send. Um, mm -hmm. Some people are asking to, to zoom in if possible. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I've sent myself uh, an email with five attachments, and hopefully within a few seconds or within a minute, you'll start seeing rows appearing because AI recognizes one document at a time. And as it does, it just saves it here. Um, I'm just trying to see questions. There's one question okay. about, uh, sorry, Abdul, uh, about uh, the email application. Um, does it work with any other email applications besides uh, Outlook? Microsoft Outlook? Good question. Um, well, even if it doesn't, you can set up redirects to for, uh, email forwarding to your uh, Office 365. I never tried anything else. I think I, if I had to, to guess, I would say it probably only has one email option, but maybe, maybe it has Outlook.com, maybe, but that's very easy to test. Would it be related to the connectors available or something like that? Exactly. There are trigger connectors and step connectors within the flow. So either is a trigger connector called Outlook or let's say Gmail or Google, then it works. I would test right now, but it's in the middle of running. Mm -hmm. so I, I can't have a look. But while we're talking, you can see boom, I already have five. Oh, wow. Yeah, so work. nice. So any other questions? By the way, at this point, I'm done. Uh, if you want to talk about licensing, I'll do that. But I would prefer to go over any questions if, you are, if anyone has any. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Yeah, Shafiq is, uh, is asking us to share the replay. Yes, the replay will be shared, right, Sia? The replay of this session will be shared yes right? yes so uh, maybe tomorrow or so i'll be sending an email uh, with the link of the recording for this session but you can also uh, so the the sessions are being published uh, on youtube on a channel created for the meetup group you can subscribe and 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 get a notification when the video is available there Okay. So, any other questions, Abdul, do you think? Have you uh, seen any other? 
Mm, no, no, Anthony is saying it. It reads from Microsoft Outlook. Any hope for Gmail? So we've we've gone over that. Um, that you haven't tried, Dennis. You haven't tried any other application, email application yet. Uh, no. But Vivek, no. Vivek is saying that there is a Gmail connector. So mm. maybe that could be the solution. Uh, the Gmail co connector. Let's see if there is something for Gmail. Yeah, I was just going to ask you to search. Yeah, wow. Google connector. Nothing to do with Microsoft here. Even, yeah. And Dropbox it and. Apparently it works. Mm -hmm. And I, if I had to guess, I think Outlook.com should also work. Okay, I have a question, Dennis. Um, what do you think is the best resource to learn Power Automate from your experience? Like, or is it just by trial and error? Well, when I two and a half, three years ago started working with it, I, there was nothing much to use except for official documentation. Now, I think even if you go to here, you'll see uh, like lessons right here on the uh, well, on Power Apps and Flow. Um, another option is I I I really like Shane Shane uh, Young. Um, I used to watch him maybe two years ago. I still do sometimes. He has created up to let's say hundred of videos. Very amazing. Really easy to understand. Okay. Can you, Dennis? Then I'll I'll write it down. But then maybe we can Thank also you. send, uh, send that, that information on the email that we will oh, send yeah. tomorrow. <laughs> What's the difference between Power Apps and Power Automate? So Power Apps is your front end user uh, user interface UI, and Power Automate is your back end with no user interface where heavy lifting is happening, like workflows are running. Okay. How do you deal with the confidence percentages um, values? So um, when we are building these kind of applications, errors may occur. I'm guessing. Uh, how do you deal with that? So how how can we build something like this for a client, and then the client uh, thinks may think that. Uh, it doesn't need to monitor the results because everything is done automatically. Uh, this is why you have access to confidence data alongside with the data itself. You should never assume that recognition is perfect. So you should set up a trigger or a warning on low confidence level. If it's below any, if it's a really important document, let's say financial document with where money is involved, set your confidence level threshold at like, I don't know, 85, 90% or 95%. You can choose how you display it. Either you can set up an email alert to get this, or you can show it on the form, or, or you can show it right here, right next to the um, invoice number. I can, I can add one more label that will say what the confidence number is here. I don't have much space, but I have I have access to this. I'm not going to do it like right now, but form processor mm -hmm. uh, object contains this information here. I I can if I want I can display it here. Yeah, and we have uh, Vivek. He shared a nice resource there, a link uh, to learn different things. Actually, not only Power Apps and Power Automate. Which mm -hmm. is very nice. Thank you, Vivek. Uh, so it's never fair. Is it never fair to ask for a 100% confidence? I've level? never, I've never. I think maybe once I saw 100 a few months ago, but maybe it was a dream. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> it's normal that it's it is doesn't have. I think 100% will show up only if you re-upload the identical document. Maybe that's how you can get it. The one that it, it was used for training. 
but okay. uh, but it but it's uh, the fact that it it's, it displays that it has uh, let's say uh, an eighty five percent confidence. It doesn't mean that the result is wrong. It just means it's just a, a statistics uh, uh, value yeah. indicating that. Uh, Mm -hmm. It may there's a margin for error. Is that correct? Yeah, I with these Rogers invoices, I haven't seen a single error, even though it says 80%. Mm -hmm. uh, it was 100% correct from what I could tell. Uh, but unfortunately, I've seen cases um, a few months ago where it would say, let's say 90%, but it was wrong. Uh, I think the only way to fix this is to upload as many documents as possible. Five is not enough. Upload if you can upload a hundred. Upload a hundred to train it. Just yeah. to train it. Yeah, maximum I think is five hundred. So you have lots of options, lots of ways to train it. Okay, and uh, uh, Prab is asking a question: Is there any website where we can find practice projects for Power Apps? Practice projects. So it's interesting. You can create a Power App from a template. Um, there are many templates here. Um, maybe not on this page, but there are dozens and dozens of templates that you can search. Let's say uh, AI Builder or something. Probably won't. Won't find. Yeah, there is a. I forgot how to get there, but. There is a search right here where it, you can uh, get dozens and dozens of apps mm -hmm. and they just uh, are built on the fly from a template. All you have to do is just provide it with uh, uh, data sources. If it connects to your mailbox, you need to select which mailbox or folder you want and so on. Um, yeah. I didn't. So maybe, maybe they say change the place. They keep changing. Um, that's already. <laughs> yeah, they do. But at the same time, so all templates. So it's under home. You scroll down, make your own app, and you can select these four, or you let's say I'll click. There's all templates on the right. There. Yeah, you can, yeah, you can click there. Wait, let's actually do that. You'll see there's a supposed to be a big list. I remember you can search here to filter it. Uh, some office or all. It's a big list. So you can, I, I'll click here for fun, but while it's doing, we can talk about something else. Yeah, and we've got Christian here. He's shared um, a link for some uh, Power Apps challenges, Power Platforms challenges, mm -hmm. to, like to build an app, which is very nice. Thanks, Christian. And Vivek, Vivek also shared um, the link for the, uh, business application summit sessions. Mm -hmm. Thank you. If you want to tell us a little bit about uh, licensing, uh, what you know, uh, maybe it will yes. be helpful for some. Yes, I think it's people. unfair to miss it because uh, unfortunately, licensing is. I honestly, I'm not really happy with the pricing because I showed you how I automated my Rogers invoices, but to be honest with you, I'm not going to use it because. The cheapest license is five hundred dollars per month, uh, and this is makes it very steep. So that will only work for organizations that are uh, that need recognize something expensive, and a lot of it. That yes, will, so. and also on top of that, although it's not that you know expensive in comparison, is that the person who uses the app uh, and um, creates it also needs a premium license. Uh, premium Power Apps license. Also, there is a uh, more precise calculator. I'll open it in a second and I'll show you. Um, so you can say how many things you want to recognize. In this case, we don't. We only care about forms. Let's say I have 500 forms per month. Calculate. Uh, it'll say. I think it. That's it. Okay, 500 month, per month. That's US, by the way. If I need, uh, let's say, 5,000 forms per month, so that's $2,000. Is it fair or not? I would say I'm not going to use it for my own uh, purposes yet, um, but maybe there is an organization that needs lots of image recognition. 
And if you want to hire AI experts, they will charge a lot more anyway. So maybe for somebody it will be a good price. For myself, I'm not using it for my Rogers. I <laughs> for my Rogers invoices. That's too mm -hmm. expensive for a household. And how can you then play with it as you are now uh, doing and showing us uh, what what kind of licensing or what kind of access do you need to have to, so, to just so learn and yeah to try it? So yes. uh, I'll, I'll send a link in the uh, Teams chat, chat, but get a E5 trial license uh, that will give you if you actively use it, you shouldn't worry about this for a year. So here you request a new um, um, tenant, then it might take up to a day because it's a very busy time for Microsoft for this tenant to be provisioned. Then if you have a chance, click on uh, user pack. There is a pack that creates 25 test users for your tenant. And even though AI Builder expires within 30 days, that expires for that user only. So my trial already expired twice, but I just switch to another user and use another user. In my tenant, I have 25 users, or maybe, or maybe sorry, I think 15 actually. So mm -hmm. literally I'm covered for a year of experimenting and development. The only inconvenience is that I just need to log in as a different uh, account. Oh, so, okay. By a tenant, you mean you have some sort of like an enterprise office 365 subscription and you have different users under that enterprise and you're switching between those users right correct yeah yeah okay in fact you actually see it right here uh, that's user one it's user two so these are within this dev tenant both of these guys and okay. both of them have license assigned um, um power apps license mm. Okay. But there are other features that are available for free in Power Apps, right? Like it's only the AI yeah. builder that's not free, but there are other features that are free. Yes, yeah, so you can do do a ton of uh, things for free. Like this app I've just generated, it's free. Uh, even though I don't know which connectors it uses, I am quite certain. The app that I think I closed already. So here, so if I delete this piece, it's free. The only paid piece is this one. The rest of the app was free. Uh, inside Power App, um, sorry, Power Automate Flow, the only step that was paid is the one that was with AI Builder. So if you can replace it with something else, uh, so this is the only thing that makes it not free. Okay. It, this is free. This is free. This is free. So. Okay. All right. Great. Okay, guys. Any other questions? I think we should uh, wrap up this session now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you so much, Dennis. This is a so fabulous presentation. Uh, I hope the attendees found this useful even if we are not uh, starting with power apps just just yet at least is interesting and useful to have uh, knowledge to know what's going on what what's what is available and what we can discuss with with our clients those who, who work with uh, as consultants and for sure sooner uh, or later we will probably need to uh, learn something else outside just excel although like i was saying at the beginning excel has so much has always have so much to learn and each, each day has new things to learn so i think it's just a matter of choosing where we want to work and in which type of application which which type of solution there's room for for all types of things i would say uh I hope you like it. Thank you so much, Dennis. Don't uh, I will let you uh, uh, close the session in a in a minute or two. But before that, I want to I have some uh, notes before closing. Um, Alan or Paula, one of them, uh, if they are available, 
would you like to speak about the Excel expert tips course uh, for COVID uh, relief that was just made available one or two days ago? Uh, you can unmute yourselves, one of you. I don't know who would like to talk, if Paula or Alan. I think uh, Paul has handed the reins to me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Claiming no mic. Um, yeah, you, you could have said this, Celia, really. Just a second, please, uh, Alan. Um, you have the contacts, uh, contact information from Dennis on the screen, uh, but we, we will also be sending that. So maybe you can uh, now stop sharing, Alan. Um, Dennis, do you think? Yes, <clears throat> done. It's nicer to see people big on the screen. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Go ahead, Alan. <laughs> uh, yeah, so for anybody who uh, who doesn't know on this, this meetup at the moment, uh, Paula, who's on the, the call tonight, Paula Guilfoyle from Excel Club, she had a vision a little over a month ago uh, during this pandemic of what the, like, if the Excel community can do something. Uh, so we've gathered 26 uh, kind of authors, YouTubers, content creators, you know, a bunch of Excel uh, people who uh, uh, kind of have a reputation in the community uh, to get together and uh, produce some content. So we've created a five hour plus course, uh, which we could put, uh, Paul has put the link in the chat room now. Mm -hmm. So it's over five hours, full of tips and tricks from a bunch of Excel users. It's only 10 euros, uh, just 10 euros. And that money 100% will go straight to a charity called Goal, who are an Irish based charity who specialize in emergency crisis and helping developing areas in pandemics such as this, uh, making sure they've got the right equipment, uh, but also stuff that we kind of take for granted, having fresh water, shelter, hygiene. Um, yeah, and they're, they're specialising in this kind of area in emergency crisis and yeah, only 10 euros guys, even if you don't want the course, <laughs> to put the money in anyway so that uh, those in more need than us uh, will get what they need, really. Yeah, and the the uh, the course shows uh, uh, there on the page with two different prices, ten or twenty. In fact, for me, I think it shows US dollars, so I'm not sure. Okay, yeah. But anyway, I think it's priced it's, according to the region you're you're maybe, logging from. Maybe, maybe that's it. Uh, you can you can choose. Uh, the $20 uh, price if you are willing to donate a little bit more, but the course will be exactly the same. And we are calling it a course, but it's not really a structured course because each lesson was prepared by a different person, but it cover, covers uh, many different areas and uh, skill levels in Excel. There's a, a lot of things, different things to learn from there and you can keep it for six months. So there's plenty of time to to go over uh, all those uh, lessons. Each lesson is, 20, is 15 minutes or less. So you can consume it in small chunks if you'd like. The uh, enrollment is only open until uh, 19th of May. So, so, so move fast. <laughs> yeah, so you need to, to grab it until the 19th, yes. So uh, if you can, I, I sent, I'm probably, um, uh, probably all of you already read, uh, read this information. I sent an email early this morning, I think, just about this course. Feel free to, to share with uh, your colleagues or your networks on social media or your email friends. Anyways, uh, any way you can help sharing um, is just helping with with getting more funds for the for this cause because not, not one cent of the money will be um, taken out everything is being donated to that organization okay so that's one of the notes i wanted to deliver thank you <laughs> for your help thank you alan thank you paula for uh, inspiring us all and to act and do something it's just uh, just Thank amazing. you everybody for attending the meetup today and uh, 
we hope to see you on the next one, of course. Yeah, so about the next, um, the next events, just to have you an idea uh, what we have lined up, we will have next week. Oh, by the way, next week it will be our first anniversary. We are completing one year of Meetup, Excel Meetup Group in Toronto. Uh, we will have uh, Ashraf uh, Ghanaim uh, talking about, again, advanced stuff, uh, machine learning in Azure and integration uh, in, in, in Excel with that. Then we will have uh, the session that uh, was meant to happen last week. Uh, with Cristiano Galvão from Brazil. He will be uh, showing us the data streamer in Excel and how to collect data in real time inside Excel. After that, we will have Oakley Turvey from the UK uh, talking about the different Excel data type files, what they do, how we should be using uh, each different type of file. I think it will be very interesting. It's something that we don't... we. We tend to always use with uh, just the Excel SX file uh, file type, and we forget sometimes for other for certain um, situations, other file types could be uh, more um, more useful. Uh, what else? Uh, we will have uh, dashboards, Excel dashboards, presented by uh, Karen Abessia from Brazil, and then we will have Abdul. Uh, two weeks in a row talking about Power Pivot and uh, the next, the week after talking about DAX. And about that's time, it for now. Time intelligence in DAX. That, yeah, exactly. Thank you. Time intel, not DAX in general, but time intelligence in DAX. It will be a very interesting one as well. There's a nice cat over there <laughs> passing by. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so just to give you an idea that there's a lot of content being lined up, I think Excel is a, a, a never ending source. So I think we could do uh, daily sessions. <laughs> there will always be something to, to, to share and to learn. Uh, after that, there will be more for sure. I'm not sure how these will, how we will carry on after uh, the pandemic uh, ends and we are trying to get back to our normal lives for now. Uh, while we are all at home and we are a little bit less busy with commuting to work and all that, it's easier to prepare these meetings on a, on a daily basis. And uh, I'm thankful to all of you to join and to come and, and uh, engage with the, uh, the presenter, making questions. And I just hope it's, it's being um, helpful, for, helpful for you. And, uh, uh, come again and be, be sure to, to, to share if you can, so that other people can, can also enjoy. Um, Dennis, uh, final, final words. Thank you so much um, for your time, for your expertise. Feel free to add anything else you'd like, uh, to add any information, uh, how we, people can find you. And uh, let's close with that. I'll uh, post uh, maybe a, a link to my LinkedIn. Lately, I just really like the LinkedIn as a platform. So please, guys, uh, add me there. I want as many <laughs> uh, connections, connections as possible, um, especially if they are meaningful and uh, we know each other, which is now we do. Really, thank you for inviting me, Celia. I, I really appreciate it. Pleasure. Abdu and everyone for organizing this. Um, yeah, please connect, please message me. I'm super friendly, like talking and chatting. Um, so thank you, everyone. Thank you, Dennis, for being here. It was an awesome presentation. Thank you so much. Yeah, and we'll be sending the, your contact information and any other uh, links that you would like to share about any materials or other platforms where you have your uh, um, files available. We will send that on our email. Uh, tomorrow or so. Okay, thank you so much. I will stop recording. We can hang out still for a little bit uh, more time. Whoever wants to stay and unmute the microphones and chat a little bit. Yes, yeah, Celia, are you bringing cake next time? If I'm well, bringing oh, cake, okay. yeah. What's your <laughs> yeah.